Welcome to my solo guitar chords comping lesson. Hi my dear jazz friends all over the world, Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from Austria. You can download all the lesson material like the tap and the backing track for this classic Miles Davis tune from the link down below in the description box. Please also visit my lesson shop guitarversum.com for more lessons like this one. And now let's get started. We're in the key of C minor and we have a 12 bar song form. I'm gonna show and explain two choruses for you. The first one is easier, the second one uses some uh, nice inversions. We start with the C minor chord and I have this nice cliche line here for you. Instead of just playing two bars of C minor 7. We start with C minor triad, 8th fret. 10th fret, these are the roots, twice, and E flat and G, only up until the B string, right? Then we exchange the root for the major 7 and we get a C minor major 7 chord. Regular Charleston rhythm, regular jazz rhythm, 1, 2, and. Then going down to the C minor 7 chord now, 8, 8, 8, 8, and I play a little break. So all the four strings and then just the three upper strings. Going to C minor six, eight, seven, eight, eight. Here's the sixth now. So what we have is slow tempo. Now we go to G minor uh, seven. That's 10, eight, 10, 11. Here is your root G minor. One, and instead of playing one bar of G minor 7, I play a G minor 9 chord also. One, two, and has the bass, and then the um, I have my pinky going from the 11th to the 10th fret, which is the 9th of the chord, and I get a G minor 9 chord. So I play the upper three strings twice, like in the break we had. And that takes me to the 5 chord, because we're in a 2, 5, 1 progression. Now the 5 chord is a C7. You can play this as a 13 chord, or as I play it as a C7 sharp 5 chord. It's more interesting, and it works because the melody only has the 7th in there. Not much going on, so I can alter the chord. C, B flat, E, and here's the sharp 5 or flat 13. It's the A flat or G flat, uh, G sharp. So, um, and also I play this on the four and. One, two, and three, and four, and. This gives the, the rhythm kind of a pushy thing. It pushes, moves the rhythm forward. Then I play a break again, bass, and the upper three strings twice, right? Ah, oh, sorry. This is short, always the first one. Resolution to the one chord, F major seven. 8, 10, 9, 10. And for a change, I let this ring. So I have contrasts, long held notes, long held chords, um, and then some short clusters. 1, 2, 3, and. Play the higher three strings again. 2, 3, and. And now the second bar of the F major chord, I play an F major 9 chord. 8, 7, 9, 8. Here's the ninth of the chord, okay? Then going to another 2-5-1. You have to know your 2 5 one. So here was one. Here's another one. F minor 7, like in the G, but on F. Then going to F minor 9 for some nice change. B flat 13. Now I do not alter the chord because it fits the melody better. So the same as this one, but this one goes here. This is the 13 now. Another mixer chord. Mixer chords are the one are unaltered dominant chords. 
beef at 9. So 13 is unaltered and the 9th is also unaltered. So um, 5, 6, 5, 6. There is no root in here, so you have to memorize that your virtual root, is what I call it, would be here. You start one to the left on the next string. So that's a B flat 13 and a B flat 9. And that takes us to the one chord uh, E flat major 7. I played down here. Usually I would play it up here, but the melody I think at that time is a D. That's why I chose it to play it here. And then I add the G on top even. And that takes me to uh, another 2-5. Now we only have half a bar. So E flat's minus seven. We had G, we had F, now we have E flat. You see a pattern there? It goes down in whole tones, always two five ones or two fives. So this is a way to memorize your songs. Memorize uh, two five ones so you can recognize them and then just see how they move. Because most jazz standards have tons of two five ones in them. It's the jazz cadence. All right, so E flat minus seven. We hold the chord a little longer now. One, uh, four, and one, two. Going to A flat 13. See how I move my two fingers? I don't lift them. That's important to get a smooth transition to E flat, thir uh, A flat, sorry, A flat 13. The same as we had an F and B flat. Now we have an E flat and A flat. And then we resolve it this time to D flat major 7. Let it ring again, hold it, 2, 3, and. And now we have a minor cadence, D half diminished. All you have to do is move your index in here. And there. Now, that's the same as the B flat 9 you were gonna say now. That's true, it's the same chord. Now here's the root D half diminished. In B flat we didn't have one. Okay, so um, a little break again, and G altered. After half diminished, you always have to alter the chord. The dominant chord is always after it, and you have to alter this. So that's a G altered, the same as we had on here on the C altered. Okay, so that was the first chorus, and I'm going to play through the first chorus now at slow tempo. Three, four. If you're into chord melody, I have a chord melody starter pack for you with five easy lessons from my YouTube channel for best value. And you can download it from the link down below in the description box. Go check it out. We start the second chord the same as the first, but on a, in a different position. We have that same cliche line we had up here, down here. It sounds a little different, but it's the same cliché line with the root C going to the major 7, the flat 7th and the 6th. Now here's a C minor triad, I guess you know this one, 3, 5, 5, 4, okay, um, same rhythm. Now it's a little harder to fret because now we have this really in between all the other fingers. This one goes to the 4th fret on the G string. So you need to flip your fingers, switch them. Three, five, four, four. Then in, in order to get the third fret, all you need to do is lift the finger and have a bar chord, which usually you would play like this. But since you come from here, all you need to do is move, uh, lift your middle finger, okay? That's easier, even though it looks a little weird. So, um, and now for the six minus, uh, C minus 6 chord, we need that A here, which is no way we can play the bar chord anymore. All you do is have your middle finger on the C and this one on the A, right? It sounds so cool, this chord. So here's this cliche line. G 
minor again, G minor 7, all the 3rd frets, to G minor 11. This is another chord from the group. Check out my video first, the basic jazz chords. I'm going to put a link in the description box below and or a card up here. And also check out my video tension chords, okay? So that's where you get all the explanation for which chord belongs in which group and how to use that. So G minor and G minor 11 is another Dorian or, or sorry, minor group chord actually. Three, 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 one. Here's the eleventh of the chord. Going to C7 flat nine. Three, two, three, two. Again, I could have played the ninth chord, but the melody here allows for a flat nine. So um, C7 flat nine, and now I play a tritone sub for the C7 chord. If you take a regular C7 cowboy chord and you exchange the root for the tritone away. A tritone is always one to the left or right and one lower or one higher. What does that mean? So this is a tritone. Can you see that? Or this one. That's the same note here. It's symmetrical. Okay, now what you get is if you do that, you get this chord. G flat 7 flat 5 is the tritone for a C7 chord. G flat, E, B flat or A sharp, and C. Right? So, um, and I'm. This is easy to change if you fret it with your thumb. C7 flat 9, going to G flat 7 flat 5. This gives it some new vibe. And the one chord is F major 7, of course. Two bars, what am I gonna do? I could play these two bars, boring. I do a little, um, first of all, let it ring. One, two, three, and I go up to G minor. Just It's just an in-between chord. We're still on F major. It's just an ascending movement that takes me to the inversion of F major 7. That's five, three, five, five. And then I move my pinky out and I get an F triad with the A in bass. I just want to create a little melody in, you know, a little motion in my comping as well. So, um, where were we? One, two, three, and... Doesn't that sound so much better than just going... <laughs> right? Three, four, one, two, three, and... Okay. Now, F minor 7 with A flat in bass. That's an inversion. I chose that because it's next. That's a regular F minor 7 chord. A flat, F here is the root. Memorize where your root is or you won't be able to move your chords around the fretboard. Uh, C and E flat. Now, the 5 chord, B flat, with A flat in bass, the seventh in bass. This is a regular seventh chord, but it sounds so cool because of the seventh in the bass. A flat, F, B flat, and the D, right? So, um, now E flat major with the G in bass. We have this on F, here is it, it is in E flat. Sorry, three, one, three, three, here's the E flat again. And I play a different rhythm now. I start on one and, one and, then the bass, upper three strings twice, one and, and I push on four and, I push the next chord, E flat minus seven, with the uh, uh, third in bass, the G flat in bass, just like F, two down, it's easy. Once you know what you're doing, it's easy. You just move your chords around. E flat minor 7, again going to A flat, the 5 chord, with the 7th in bass, right? I split it, bass and higher notes, and now we have a new chord, beautiful chord. D, ah, uh, sorry, here we go. <laughs> D flat major 7 with the 5th in bass. Okay, that's A flat is the 5th, F, C, and here is your root on top, D flat. If you can't memorize this, here's a little, tr uh, a little trick. 
D flat 7, guess you know this. And this is the major 7th, and now the 5th in bass. Here is the logic to this chord. Okay, D flat major 7. So here's your whole 2 5 1 for, uh, in D flat. E flat minor 7, A flat, and D flat major 7. Let it ring. 1, 2, 3, and. And the last um, minor cadence. Inversion, D half diminished with the flat 5 in bass. A flat, F, C, D. Here is your root. Always after half diminished. Exactly. Dominant altered chord. G7, sharp 5. Here's the sharp 5, right? So memorize this and you have a cool 2-5-1 instead of always playing the regular which is cool too. And that takes us to the final C minor 7 chord. Okay, <clears throat> here is the entire second chorus for you at slow tempo. Two, three, four. You can help to keep the free video tutorials of this channel running by becoming a member of the channel and you can do so by clicking the join button right next to the subscribe button which also grants you access to my mini lessons. You can also say a little thank you by clicking the thanks button and donate a little something. This really helps with the productions of the videos. Thanks a lot. Check out my comping lessons here on YouTube and I also have a lot of Miles Davis lessons. Please visit my lesson shop guitarism.com and please give this video a fat thumbs up because it's so important for me as a creator. If you like uh, the lessons, also subscribe my channel and I hope to see you next week. Servus, baba!